What is going on, everybody? It's Tree from Tree Talks, and the Jacksonville Jaguars lose another game, this time to the Houston Texans. And this was a game that, you know, felt winnable at times. There were just times the Jacksonville Jaguars couldn't get out of their own way, whether that be bad play calls, whether that be terrible, terrible kicking because we don't have Josh Lambeau um, right now. The Jaguars couldn't get out of their own way, and the tank for Trevor Train gets a little bit more realistic by the minute. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about it. This is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Houston Texans. Week number five, recap, position grades, and players of the week. So as always, we're going to kick things off with the offensive side of the ball. And we're going to kick things off with Mr. Gardner Minshew. So the surprising stat at the end of the game, the announcers said that the Jaguars are 0-5 when Gardner Minshew throws over 300 yards. And that should be a shocker because that is a crazy stat. When your quarterback throws over 300 yards, there's no reason you should be losing all those games. But that has a direct correlation, I think, as of right now, to how good the Jaguars' run game is. And the Jaguars went away from the run game really, really early. The Jaguars had no reason to go away from the run game as early as they did. You know, and on passing downs, you know, they always have Chris Thompson out there. They don't have... um, They don't have... James Robinson out there. James Robinson has shown, you know, countless times that he's a good receiving back. You know, he can catch out of the backfield, but Jay Gruden still likes Chris Thompson in those passing situations as a third down running back. But the Jaguars went away from James Robinson a little bit too early for my liking, and Gardner Minshew threw the ball almost 50 times again. And I mean, that is just something that you don't want to see. And, you know, Gardner Minshew threw the ball a lot. At WSU, you know, you think he'd be built for this. And, you know, in a way he is, but he's not used to taking deep shots. He's not used to playing from behind, you know, by multiple scores. He's not used to all that. And, you know, Gardner, there were there were some times, man, where this guy, like, he had a clean pocket. And this guy still, you know, he bounced to the outside and almost created pressure on his own. Like, when he'd roll out, the defenders were in his face, and that's almost on Minshew. You know, there were times where he just could stay in the pocket, and it's a clean pocket, and he's going to have time to throw the ball, but he almost creates pressure by just trying to do a little bit too much outside of the pocket. There were still some Minshew magic moments, like that touchdown pass to Keelan Cole was beautiful, and um, he still played, you know, pretty well, but this was this was one of his worst games. And, I mean, you look back to the game that he played last year against Houston, Though going for two was not a great decision in that game. he That was his probably his worst performance. And his worst performance again was probably against Houston this year. And he did not look good. I mean, he was off target numerous times trying to hit some receivers. I mean, Tyler Eifert um, on that vertical pass in the end zone is one that comes to mind. I mean, Keelan Cole showed his frustrations when they tried to hit him twice. Uh, towards the end of the game, you know, he obviously threw his helmet off towards the end of that one. But you saw Keelan go up to Gardner and kind of say, hey, man, it's all right uh, at the end of the game. So, you know, there's some good commodity there. But, you know, I love Gardner Minshew. I'm a big Gardner Minshew stan, always have been. This has been a Gardner Minshew stan YouTube for a long time. But, I mean, there's a point where we just kind of maybe accept that this guy might just be a game manager. I mean, he does have some game-winning drives and he does have some ability in him. But, I mean, you put a superstar quarterback with – some of these guys, some of these targets that the Jaguars do have, you know, with guys like Colin Johnson, LaVisca Chanel, Colin Johnson played extremely well as well, catching his first NFL touchdown. I mean, you put a guy like Trevor Lawrence, who is this generational talent with these guys. I mean, this is a team that performs really well, but, I mean, even if you put a generational talent on the on the field with this offense, I mean, you still got to factor in how the defense plays you know, week in and week out, but, you know, that is what it is. Gardner did drive him into field goal range twice, and the defense caused the turnovers to get to that point. But uh, Steven Hauschka, who uh, did not play well. Steven Hauschka missed two field goals and, you know, back-to-back, and they were bad. And then the Jags just never turned back, just never went back to him. And I don't blame him. 
I mean, when you look that bad, you know, why why would they go back to you? You know, there were a lot of times where the Jags kind of felt like they had to go for certain situations because they couldn't trust their kickers. So, you know, I think that was some added pressure on Gardner as well. We're going to be giving Gardner a C-minus on the day. He didn't do too great. Now we're going to talk about these wide receivers, and these wide receivers continue to impress every week. Obviously, DJ Chark wasn't, you know, factored in very much. You know, Gardner Minshew said in his press conference, you know, the he didn't know exactly if it was the Texans' defense taking him away from him or if it was just him not targeting DJ. But, you know, he's he's developing that chemistry with guys like LaVisca Chanel and uh, Keelan Cole, who Keelan Cole has been a big factor for the Jaguars. He's the leading receiver for the Jags, actually, I believe. And, you know, you got to factor in guys like Colin Johnson, who's moving their way up inside the roster. And, you know, he's building chemistry with Tyler Eifert as well, who uh, – excuse me, each and every week is getting better and better um, in this offense. But these wide receivers, you know, they're they're bailing out Minshew sometimes and, and are making really good plays. Visca after the catch, I mean, he's he's been a great pickup. I mean, between him and James Robinson, the battle for Jaguar Rookie of the Year is going to be very, very close. They're both super dynamic, super fun to watch. So these uh, wide receivers are going to continue to get like a B plus. I mean, they are... They're playing well. There were times they couldn't get open. I mean, the secondary did blanket them a couple times, and Minshew had to take a sack or Minshew had to run the ball. So there were some times they couldn't get open, but, you know, a couple years of experience under their belt for these guys, and this is going to be a very exciting wide receiver core. Now we're going to talk about the running back, and like I said, you know, James Robinson, the Jags really went away from him um, really quick. And I think it was because in the second half, you know, the te- the Texans were, you know, hitting him behind the line of scrimmage. You know, it seemed like they kind of figured him out a little bit. But, you know, it's just like in Madden. You know, you can't you can't go away from the run game just because, you know, you have a couple negative plays. Just because you have a couple negative plays doesn't mean, you know, you got to go completely away from it. you got to get dynamic with how you're going to use this running back and how you're going to, you know, put him into your offensive scheme and how you're going to use him because this guy's a playmaker. He's the bell cow of your offense he's your identity right now and you got to find a way to get you got to find a way to use him that's that's just the matter of fact you got to find a way to use him and um finding a way to use him is not using him on a wild wild stupid wildcat fourth and goal call don't think i just forgot about that don't think i didn't see that don't don't think like that we're all just going to forget that you called that play like that was just so bad like that was what even was that play called, Jay? Jay, you're better than that. You've been better than that all season. Like, come on, bro. Like, what was that? Now we're just, that's going to be, like, the, we're going to be the laughing stock of the league after that. It's going to be terrible. It's going to be on, like, come on, man. I don't even know if they have that, you know, that segment before Monday Night Football anymore. But if they do, it's definitely going to be on it <laughs> because that was terrible. And, you know, you made James Robinson look a fool on that play because it just, it was doomed from the start. So, James Robinson, he's going to get a C because they just, they went away from him too much. He did get tackled in the backfield and they just, they went away from him too early and, you know, you didn't see a lot from him. Coming up next, we got the offensive line and, you know, the offensive line let up some sacks and this was, you know, not a great performance by any means, but I do think a lot of the pressure and a lot of what happened as far as the pressure goes was, you know, mostly on Minshew. I mean, Minshew kind of looked scared in the pocket right off the bat. Like, there were times, you know, J.J. Watt collapsed the pocket. I mean, that's J.J. Watt. He's going to do that. But, you know, for most of the game, it seemed like Minshew kind of just wasn't comfortable in the pocket, and he had to scramble out and, you know, tried to do too much. And, you know, that was mostly on the fault of Minshew. You know, his offensive line, I thought, did a pretty good job and. You know, like I'll say every week, they continue to overperform and they continue to do better than all of us thought they would do, you know, heading into the offseason. So I'm going to give this offensive line a B. You know, overall, the offense is going to be getting a C minus on the day. I mean, it, I think the, the missed field goals really kind of took the juice out of the offense fairly quickly. I mean, that really hurts. And, you know, this is this is a team that, you know, really looks like they're tanking. You know, it, and week one might have been a fluke, but, you know, what are you going to expect from an offense like this? Now let's talk about the defense. And this is the best game they've played all season. I mean, the scoreboard isn't going to show it. They scored some, uh, you know, last-minute fourth-quarter touchdowns. But this is the best game this defense has ever played. And this is the best game that the defensive line has ever played. Um, Taven Bryan made a play. You know, I said in my instant reaction videos, like, I mean, when Taven Bryan makes a play, you know that it's uh, – 
It's a good deal. And, I mean, they got two sacks on the day. DeJuan Smoot got a sack. And um, I'm trying to think who else got a sack. But somebody else racked up a sack as well. But DeJuan Smoot got a sack. And, you know, they did all this without Josh Allen. You know, Josh Allen wasn't on the field this week. And and they played well. And, you know, they they were without their three defensive leaders. And this is the best game they put together. I mean, they put the pressure on Deshaun Watson. They made sure that, you know, every throw that he made was contested. And, you know, Deshaun Watson threw two interceptions. So, and, you know, a lot of it was, you know, from bringing the pressure from this defensive line. So this defensive line right now is going to get a beat. I mean, they played well. I think those last, you know, bits of runs, you know, those big gashers, you know, they happen. But when the Jack is really in it at the end, you know, you would like to see them, you know, not give that kind of stuff up. But, you know, it's the NFL. It's the last minute. That kind of stuff happens. But... You know, that's that's just what that's my two cents. I thought they played but they played well. You know, they set the bar really low, so you know, you gotta get happy for the guys when they do show up and when they do play. So this was one of those instances where instances where they, they showed up, they played, and they played really well, in my opinion. Now we're gonna talk about the linebackers. And the linebackers, like I mean do are we overestimating Joe Schobert a little bit? Like, is Joe Schobert as good as we were hoping he would be? I feel like he whiffs on every tackle. You know, his whole deal was he was going to be like a really good pass coverage linebacker, and he just he just isn't. Like, I mean, he's just, eh. You know, he's he was going to be the guy, you know, out there. He was going to be that linebacker. And it seemed like every other linebacker was making plays besides Joe Schober, everybody that was coming up off the bench, you know, Cassius Marsh, you know, people that I don't even remember the names of, you know, out there making plays. And Joe Schobert's out there, you know, whiffing, so... You know, linebackers did all right. I mean, Darren Fells gashed us for that big touchdown, so, I mean, that's going to bring him down like a full letter grade. But, you know, these linebackers struggled without Miles Jack. That's to be expected. And, you know, so they're going to get a C on the day. You know, nothing too special. But we're going to go over to the position group that I really want to talk about and the position group that played really well with the exception of one player, and that's Clay Brooks. And holy fuck, did they target Clay Brooks all game long? Like, <laughs> Like, I don't have the stats in front of me, but, like, I can almost guarantee you Deshaun Watson, like, targeted him 15 times. Like, he was just getting abused out there. There were some times he made some plays, but, like, he got demolished out there, like, bad. Like, he he looked like garbage, and that's just the state of the Jaguar secondary right now. But one guy that showed up and played extremely well was Sidney Jones, man, off the practice squad, bro. I mean, from Philadelphia, the guy played at UW. I've seen him play in college a little bit, and, you know, I always liked him. You know, I thought he was a good prospect coming out of the draft, and I thought he was going to be a baller in Philly. I was surprised the Jags even got him, you know, that he got cut in Philly. But, I mean, he made two excellent plays. That Jared Wilson interception was because of him. He tipped it up and, you know, got the pick, and... When Hauschka missed the field goal, he picked Deshaun Watson off and set the Jaguars in favorable position to kick another field goal. Unfortunately, Stephen Hauschka's ass and missed that field goal as well. But, I mean, Sidney Jones, man, played out of his freaking mind and played really, really good football. And that is something that you like to see. Jared Wilson played well as well. So, you know, those two really kind of led the secondary, you know, for a group that wasn't great, you know, by any means. You got Sidney Jones and C.J. Henderson out there. You know, that might be that might be two guys to keep your eye on, especially, you know, DJ Hayden getting hurt. You know, might have been a little bit of a blessing in disguise for Sidney Jones. You know, maybe trying to get a uh, revitalized career here in Jacksonville and kind of get his shit straight. So, a uh, big jump up from an F grade now to a B grade for the secondary. I mean, Brandon Cooks did torch us. Yeah, he did. But you know you know what, Houston fans, if you're watching this and you say, how can you give your secondary B? Dude, come on, bro. Like, look at anything they did in the past, bro, and, like, you'll understand. Like, this is a big step up. Picking off Deshaun Watson, big, big step up. Overall, his defense is still going to get, like, a C-, minus though, because, I mean, eh. They, they, they did, like, like, in the first, like, three quarters, Deshaun Watson didn't look like Deshaun Watson, and the defense played really well, and I think a lot of it, you know, continues to be the defense and you know special teams can hold up their end of the bargain like I said the Jaguars can't get out of their own way so we're going to be giving the defense a C- minus on the day I mean this is just the team that can't get out of their own their own way that's just how it is now it's time for my favorite time of the week your favorite time of the week and your mom's favorite time of the week players of the week now on offense I'm giving it to Keelan Cole 
I think Keelan Cole had a good offensive, defensive, and special teams performance. I mean, he took that kickoff return to about the 40-yard line, set the Jags up in good field position, caught a touchdown pass, was able to get open, you know, and he's been reliable for Gardner Minshew all season long. And, you know, we talk about DJ Chark a lot, but I think it's time now that we really talk about uh, Keelan Cole. And I also want to say a big shout-out to Chris Conley, too. He caught that 55-yard pass. That was a duck by Minshew, but, uh, you know, really kind of, Kind of helped, you know, what he did on Thursday night as well. So, big shout out to uh, Keelan Cole. Keelan Cole going to be getting the Offensive Player of the Week. As for the Defensive Player of the Week, we're going to be giving that to Sidney Jones, dude. Your first start and your first Defensive Player of the Week. Congratulations. He played well. Everybody on Jags Twitter was shouting him out. And it was a well, well well-deserved game and well-deserved praise for your Defensive Player of the Week. And that was the Jaguars versus Texans recap. Position grades and players of the week. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel three days a week. Ain't nobody outworking me. Them's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.